So uh, the National Academy of Medicine in the United States is a, uh, a sort of government appointed independent group that really tries to exhaustively look at important developments in health and healthcare and in other fields as well. And they spent a lot of time thinking about the learning healthcare system. And I've given two definitions here, uh, which I'm not gonna just uh, read out to you, but you'll see that they're very all-inclusive. They're kind of omnibus uh, definitions. I prefer the second one uh, to the first because it specifically calls out the patient that we're really trying to learn uh, and drive better health care on behalf of the patients uh, we serve. And there are a lot of publications. If you just Google this online, you'll come up with all kinds of uh, stuff. Um, there is a Center for Research and Learning Health System in Newcastle, I believe, uh, in England. Uh, and now there is a journal, Learning Health Systems Journal. Well, one of the sure signs that a term is gaining traction is when People call themselves the professor of such and such learning health systems or set up a center for learning health systems or start a journal in a society. Uh, and then what do you know, they're world famous for being the, the expert on learning health systems. So uh, I, I don't advocate for that, but that seems to be where we're going with this uh, term. So next, please. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of different broad definitions or conceptual models about what a learning healthcare system is. And it's created quite a bit of confusion. I, I've, uh, I, on the next couple of slides, I'll show you uh, some of these, uh, and they really are quite different. I, I will say that they all uh, rely on a large degree of trust that the information, the data that's being shared is being shared amongst people who are trustworthy and aren't going to abuse the privilege. And as we're reading in the news just today, it's easy to take big data and use it for unworthy uh, causes, uh, as you're seeing with Cambridge Analytics, Analytica and their uh, problems with Facebook data. So this issue of using big data does require a certain amount of vigilance and trust. Uh, I do make a distinction between what most people call big data in healthcare and real big data. Most healthcare data that I see are actually clinical data sets that are not big data. They don't include information about what people buy as consumers, how many bandages they've bought at Boots, uh, where they uh, go online to look for things. That, that, that's big data. It uses all the data that can be captured from the world of the internet and other sources. Clinical data are usually restricted to what can be gathered from electronic medical record or from national uh, registries uh, of various uh, healthcare specialties and so forth. Um, the idea is to yield insights that are more timely and population based than what we usually see in health services research or even in clinical trials where the data are generally restricted. Uh, somebody set up a, a data source and now we're going to uh, dig into it or we're going to do a clinical trial in a limited population. Uh, the Probably the most uh, important national data set in the United States, and I'm sure you have equivalent in NHS, is PCORnet. This is the National Patient Center Clinical Research Network uh, based out of the PCORI, which is the uh, Clinical Outcomes Research Group in the United States. And I've given you a citation there, and uh, they're starting to use that data. There's always this enormous lag between setting up a framework to collect the data and actually use it for something valuable. Uh, one uh, network that really did use this data well is the Health Systems Research Network. This was made up of integrated health systems, which we called HMOs at, at the time. Uh, and uh, just speaking from my own pediatric perspective, some really good studies were done using that data to look at uh, harms associated with giving uh, drugs in pediatric uh, patients. Uh, one of the most promising uh, aspects of having these large data uh, sets available is the ability to do what are called large simple trials. Uh, now, if you want to do a randomized control trial for, let's say, uh, a drug or for a type of intervention that you're trying to do in, to improve care, uh, you have a multi-year process. It's extremely expensive. It's often three to five years before you get a result. Large simple trials take all the data that's available, which in general, uh, if you're really using big data is more representative of the entire population 
and it uses statistical ways to actually look uh, at what's happening in people who do or don't take a drug or people who are or are not exposed to an intervention. And it's a little bit more quick and dirty. It's not quite as well controlled as a traditional randomized controlled trial, but I think it's going to be much more uh, agile, much cheaper, and, and much more responsive to what we need to learn about. Uh, the next bullet uh, talks about using these large data sets to detect uh, signals uh, of harm from pharmaceuticals, vaccines, and devices. And in the United States, the most important is an FDA, Food and Drug Administration, Sentinel Initiative, which, for example, right now is looking to see how often new statins and ACE inhibitors uh, are associated with melting of the muscles or rhabdomyolysis, which is an important side effect. Now, again, as a pediatrician, one of the pilots uh, for this uh, Sentinel system looked at rotavirus vaccine, a vaccine against uh, viral diarrhea that's a major problem worldwide. And this new vaccine was looking really, really good, but there was a suspicion that it caused the intestine to uh, invaginate upon itself. It's called intussusception. Uh, and they were able to show relatively quickly that this was a side effect and to quantitate exactly what a, uh, how big that risk was. So this is all very promising. Some of you may, may remember uh, when we were looking at nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory agents uh, a while ago, uh, both the NHS data sets and data from uh, Scandinavia, which has excellent uh, clinical uh, data, and from Kaiser Permanente in the U.S., showed that a specific uh, agent was associated with severe uh, heart disease and death. And within uh, weeks of those data becoming available, uh, the drug was no longer uh, used uh, as an anti-inflammatory in the NHS and in Kaiser Permanente. So a good example of the rapid use of large data and learning quickly from those data. So if you look at the next slide, we'll see some other kinds of uh, models. Uh, some people think that the uh, way in which we learn and have a learning healthcare system is to use our uh, clinical uh, healthcare systems uh, to run actual uh, clinical trials. And in the U.S., and uh, this is a pretty well-known example, the Hospital Corporation of America, which has uh, scores of hospitals around the country, uh, decided to test a uh, idea that came from some of my colleagues in infection control uh, namely, if you uh, wash uh, people in intensive care units, especially with chlorhexidine and antiseptic, uh, you can prevent the uh, spread of methicillin resistant Staph aureus or MRSA from patient to patient and avoid infections. And this actually was highly effective, this reduced MRSA clinical trial. And as a result, uh, HCA, Hospital Corporation of America, spread it throughout its entire system and published uh, the results of how they did that. So it's a really good example of how a healthcare delivery system, which wants to learn rapidly in a rigorous way, can actually do randomized controlled trials. Uh, another way to learn and have a learning healthcare system is to run formal uh, learning collaboratives where we share learning about implementation and spread and scale up uh, of evidence-based practices. Uh, one of the most successful in the U.S. is the Children's uh, Hospital Solutions for Patient Safety. Uh, I, I think that it now has most of the major freestanding children's hospitals in the United States, and they've taken on a dozen or so, maybe 20 now, uh, clinical issues where they're trying together to learn how to best implement these practices to make care safer and uh, more effective. Um, I'm involved in a collaborative with our uh, Commonwealth Fund in the United States, which has harvested some really innovative ideas from other developed economies. In fact, three of them are uh, from uh, the UK. Uh, one of them, for example, uh, being flip discharge, another one being experience-based co-design. Uh, and uh, US healthcare systems went over to visit and uh, do site visits of these programs. And now as a group of 13 healthcare systems are trying to test and see how they can adapt these uh, innovations, if you will, uh, in the United States. So that's a type of learning collaborative. Uh, probably the most famous, in which you try to replicate in uh, NHS, is the Keystone Project in Michigan. 
Uh, this was run by a guy from Hopkins named Peter Pronovost, designed to reduce central line associated bloodstream infections in 103 uh, ITUs. And uh, they showed that they could do that in a learning collaborative where they implemented evidence-based practices very well. Uh, you tried to replicate that um, in, in uh, something, I think it was called, uh, not copying Michigan, but some phrase like that, and it <clears throat> failed miserably. Uh, and Mary Dixon Woods, who's at Cambridge, um, did some analysis of why this was the case. And it turns out that uh, understanding what uh, the context is in which you're trying to duplicate uh, an experience is really important. And um, doing it with great fidelity is very important. And so just plopping it down in the middle of the NHS didn't really work very well. Then some organizations think of learning healthcare systems as what they can do internally to learn. So uh, let's say, for example, that Boston Children's Hospital, where I, want, where I work, wants to introduce a way to uh, look at reconciling medications patients are on so that we're absolutely sure they're getting the right medications and that they're delivered reliably. Um, well, we might have the various service lines and, and, and wards uh, in the hospital function as a learning collaborative in which they learn from each other uh, how they can uh, do this in the best possible way, given the fact that one of them's in cardiology and one of them's in surgery. Uh, so this is mutual learning, learning healthcare system where people are exchanging uh, information.